बाउंड्री ऑफ सिंपल शेप्स पार्ट वन इन दिस वीडियो यू विल लर्न व्हाट इज अ बाउंड्री एंड व्हाई एंड हाउ इज द बाउंड्री ऑफ एनी शेप मेजर्ड पापा कम प्ले विद मी लेट मी फिनिश दिस कैलकुलेशन एंड देन आई विल कम विद यू बट पापा व्हाट आर यू कैलकुलेटिंग I am trying to find the length of the boundary of my farm. Length of the boundary? What is the boundary? Then you can help me find the length of the boundary. Sit down and I will tell you. Okay. Now tell me. The line on all sides of a shape that defines its edge is called the boundary of that shape. I don't get it. I will show you the boundary of the field then you will understand it easily see this is our farm this is the line around the field it shows us where the edge of the field is so this line is the boundary of this field now did you understand yes now i understand the edge of a shape is called its boundary Yes and I am finding out the length of the boundary of this field It is easy you can add the length of the line on all sides of the boundary and you will get the boundary's length I will tell you the length of all these lines Find out the length of the boundary and tell me Okay tell me the length of all the lines The length of this line is 9 meters The length of this line is also 9 meters. The length of the bottom line is 21 meters and the length of this slanting line is 15 meters. Okay, now I know the length of all the lines. By adding these, I will get the length of the field's boundary. If you add 9 meters to 9 meters the answer will be 18 meters if we add 15 meters to 18 meters the answer will be 33 meters and if we add 21 meters to 33 meters the answer will be 54 meters that means the boundary of this field is 54 meters Yes Rayansh you are right That is true but why are you finding the length of the boundary of this field because we need to protect the crop in the field by putting a barbed wire along the boundary so that animals don't spoil it what is the need to find the length of the boundary if you want to put barbed wire you can buy it just like that rayansh son if we buy the wire without knowing the length of the boundary then the wire might either be long or short if we get a short wire then we have to buy more wire again and if we get a long wire the remaining wire will be of no use that means the length of the boundary is a very useful measurement as you said you can buy the right length of wire by finding the length of the boundary what similar tasks could be there where the length of the boundary needs to be measured measuring a boundary is required for many things For example if lace is to be fixed around the table cloth then we have to measure the boundary of the table cloth in the race track it is necessary to measure the boundary of the track when there is a race of vehicles or people a special kind of wooden frame is also put around the door for that it is necessary to measure the boundary understood now come to the park with me yes let's go Do you know that a grill has been installed on the park's boundary and the length of the boundary would have been measured for that as well Today you learned what is a boundary why it is important to measure the length of the boundary and how is the length of the boundary measured boundary of simple shapes part 2 in this video you will learn what is a boundary and why and how is the boundary of a shape measured
रेयंश लेट्स गो फॉर अ वॉक पापा वाई डू यू गो फॉर अ वॉक आई डोंट एंजॉय इट एट ऑल वॉकिंग कीप्स द बॉडी हेल्थी द डॉक्टर सेज दैट अ पर्सन ऑफ माई एज शुड वॉक एट लीस्ट सिक्स किलोमीटर्स पर डे सो डू यू वॉक सिक्स किलोमीटर्स एवरी डे यस थ्री किलोमीटर्स इन द मॉर्निंग एंड थ्री किलोमीटर्स इन द इवनिंग बट हाउ डू यू नो दैट यू हैव वॉक फॉर थ्री किलोमीटर्स इट्स वेरी इजी यू कैन फाइंड इट द सेम वे आई फाउंड आउट हाउ आई विल टेल यू इन द पार्क वेर आई गो फॉर माई वॉक द इनक्लोजर मेड फॉर वॉकिंग is of the shape of a square one side of its length is 250 meters now you tell me how many rounds do i have to walk to complete 3 kilometers you mean i have to find the length of this boundary yes okay i will try papa it is a square shape that means all its sides will be 250 meters each Now we add these four sides. Wait, Rayansh. What happened, Papa? Instead of adding the same number four times, it is better to multiply this number by four. Oh yes, I didn't think of that. Now we can find the length of this boundary by multiplying the length of an edge by four. So tell me, what is the length of the boundary? Two hundred and fifty multiplied by four will be one thousand. That means the length of this boundary is one thousand meters. And how many kilometers is one thousand meters? One kilometer. All right. Now tell me how many rounds do I have to take of this boundary to complete three kilometers? For a three kilometer walk, you have to take three rounds of this boundary. Perfect, Rayansh. And this is what I do. I take three rounds of this boundary. This tells me that I have walked three kilometers. Oh, now I get it. You walk three kilometers in the morning and three kilometers in the evening. This way, you walk six kilometers every day. Yes, Rayansh, that is what I do. How many kilometers should I walk daily to stay healthy? Children should play in the park to stay healthy. That is why. I am taking you to the park. You play and I'll take a walk. Okay papa, let's go. Rayansh, I have bought the farm next to our farm. Now our farm is bigger than before. Does that mean its boundary would have also increased? Yes, and therefore You have to find out the length of its boundary. Okay, tell me the measurements of the edges of all sides and I will tell the length of the boundary. I have written the measurements of all the sides of the field on this paper. You tell me the length of the boundary. Okay. This farm has six sides. By adding all these, I can find the length of the field's boundary. Yes, tell me. What will be the length of the boundary? Nine meters added to five meters is fourteen meters. Fourteen meters added to nine meters is twenty-three meters. Four meters added to twenty-three meters is twenty-seven meters. Twenty-seven meters added to twenty-two meters will be forty-nine meters. If we add twenty-one meters to forty-nine, the answer will be seventy meters. That means the length of our farm's boundary is seventy meters. You are right, Rayansh. Now you have learned how to calculate the length of the boundary. Now you can help those people in the village who do not know how to measure the length of the boundary. Today we have learned that to find the length of the boundary of any shape, the length of all its sides are added. And irrespective of how many sides or edges there are in a shape, The method to find the length of the boundary remains the same. Boundary of simple shapes part 3. Today we will learn what is the relationship between 
the number of edges in shapes and the length of their boundaries. Rayansh, today I am going to get wire to put around the boundary of the field. Your uncle also wants to put a wire around his farm's boundary. We measured the boundary of our farm yesterday. Now you can measure the boundary of uncle's farm as well. Then we can bring wires for both the farms together. Okay, tell me the shape of their fields and the measurements of all the sides of the farm. Here it is. I have already made it on the same paper on which we measured our field yesterday. Okay, let me tell you the length of uncle's farm's boundary. It has only four edges. That means its boundary will be less than our field's boundary. 15 added to 20 is 35 meters. 22 meters added to 35 is 57 meters. And when 13 meters are added to 57 meters, the answer will be 70 meters. Papa, the length of uncle's farm's boundary is 70 meters. Show me. Here it is. Just a minute. What happened? I may have made a mistake in adding. The measurement of the boundaries of uncle's and our farm seems to be the same. Give it to me. I'll check. No, Rayansh. There is no mistake. Your calculation is correct. So, does that mean that the length of the boundaries of both the fields is the same? Yes. But how is this possible? Why is it not possible? The shape of the two fields is different. Then how come the measurement of their boundaries is the same? It is possible. The size of the boundary has no relation to the shape. A shape can have three or more edges. And all the edges can have different measurements. So, the length of the boundary of different shapes can be the same. I did not understand it properly. Look, I have three thin sticks of the same size. They all have the same length, 15 centimeters. Yes, their length is the same. Now, I cut one of these sticks into three parts and make a shape from it. In the same way, I cut the other stick into four parts and make a shape from it. And finally, I cut third stick into five parts and again make a shape from it. Now there are three such figures in front of you that are made from sticks of equal lengths. Can you tell the length of their boundaries? Yes, it is very easy. Sticks of 15 centimeters each have been used to make all the three shapes. So, the length of their boundaries will also be the same. That is 15 centimeters. You see, the shape of these three figures is different. Despite the fact that the length of the boundaries is the same. Now, I understand that different shapes can have the same length of boundary. Apart from this, I understood one more thing. What? I thought that if a figure has more number of edges, then the length of its boundary will also be more. But it is not so. The number of edges in these three shapes is also different. This figure has three edges. This figure has four edges. This figure has five edges. Yet, the length of the boundary for all is 15 centimeters. You can find it by looking at these fields also. Look, our farm has six edges, while your uncle's field has four edges. But the measurements of the boundaries of both fields is the same. Yes, I had not paid attention to this. But is it possible? That the length of the boundary of a shape with less number of edges is more and the length of the boundary with more number of edges is less? Yes, absolutely possible. This can be seen practically. See, let's take two thin sticks of different sizes. The short stick is 10 cm long and the long one is 15 cm long. Now, let's cut the short stick into six pieces and make a shape. And now cut the long stick into three pieces and make another shape. Now tell, which of these two boundaries is longer? 
द लेंथ ऑफ द बाउंड्री ऑफ दिस ट्राइंगल शेप इज फिफ्टीन सेंटीमीटर्स विच इज मोर देन द लेंथ ऑफ द बाउंड्री ऑफ द शेप विथ सिक्स एजेस एब्सोल्युटली राइट दैट मीन्स द नंबर ऑफ एजेस ऑफ अ शेप डज नॉट अफेक्ट द लेंथ ऑफ इट्स बाउंड्री येस नाउ आई अंडरस्टैंड Let's go to the market now and buy some wire for the farms. Today we have learned that even if the shape of two figures is different, the length of their boundaries can be the same. And the number of edges of a shape does not affect the length of its boundary. The length of the boundary of a shape with more edges can be less than the length of the boundary with the less edges. Boundary of complex shapes part 1 In this video we will learn how to measure the boundary of a complex shape What are you doing mummy I want to make a cover for this table so I am taking the measurement of its boundary with a thread Yes with a thread Papa told me yesterday that if we have to measure the boundary of a figure we have to add up their sides What your father said is correct The edges of shapes with straight lines can be measured with a scale because the scale is also straight but you cannot measure a shape which has a curved boundary with a scale To measure the boundaries of such shapes you have to use threads ropes etc Okay now i get it but how are you measuring the boundaries of this shape with a thread it is very easy by placing one end of the thread at a point on the edge of this table i will wrap it around the complete edge after that i will mark the thread where it meets the starting point Now keeping the thread straight I will measure it with a scale up to the marked point This way I will know what is the length of this table's boundary Oh wow this method is great mummy This way we can measure the boundary of a curved shape Yes let's measure the boundary of another shape Okay mummy I will make a shape on paper Now with the help of a thread find the length of this figure's boundary I place a thread on the boundary and then I mark this thread where it is meeting the starting point Now I keep this thread straight and measure it with a scale Look I got the measurement the length of this shape's boundary is 15 cm Now you can measure the boundaries of shapes with both straight and curved edges Today we learned that threads can be used to find the length of the boundary of complex shapes. Boundary of complex shapes part 2 In this video we will learn does changing shapes also make a difference in the length of their boundaries Look I made a square on this paper its boundary is 12 cm Yes that is easy to find Yes but I want to find out if I change the shape of this figure will the length also change or not If the figure changes the length of the figure will surely change Okay shall we change the shape Yes Look I will remove this one square and change its shape Now let's measure this figure Write down the length of all the sides 3 cm 3 cm 2 cm 1 cm 1 cm 2 cm If you add all these the answer will be 12 cm 
we changed the shape of the figure yet the size of the boundary did not change i think we should change the shape differently reyansh then the size of the boundary will also change this time you try to change the shape okay see i will remove this square from the figure and change its shape i think that the length of the boundary of this shape will still be 12 cm let's measure and check okay let's write the length of all the edges 3 cm 3 cm 3 cm 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm If we add them the answer will be 14 cm. That means changing the shape of figure changes the size of its boundary. No. When you change the shape the length of the boundary did not change. But when I change the shape the length of the boundary changed. This means changing the shape may change the length of its boundary or may not change the length of its boundary. Did you get it? Hmm. Today we learned that the length of the boundary may change when the shape is changed and that it is not necessary that the length of the boundary changes if the shape is changed. Therefore it is important to measure the length of the boundary when the shape is changed Size of simple shapes part 1 Today we will learn how different shapes are measured and why do shapes need to be measured vandana look my father has given me this book oh this is a very big book i too have a big book see this yes it is also a big book but my book is much bigger no i think my book is bigger than yours look my book is bigger than your book Look from this side my book looks much bigger. Oh yes, my book is bigger from one side. And your book is bigger from this side. Then whose book is bigger? Let's ask madam. Yes, let's go. Madam, we have to ask you something. Sure. Madam, we have these two books. We have to know which one of these two books is bigger. That is very easy to find. Vandana and Neha, you try to find out which of these two books occupies more space. But how will we know which book is bigger? Different shapes are measured based on how much space they occupy. Both these books are a quadrilateral. meaning they have four sides or edges madam it means that to find out which one of these two books is bigger we have to find out how much space it occupies yes but madam how can we find out how much space a shape occupies it is very easy to find out For this purpose we use square shaped pieces. You can also make these pieces using paper, cardboard or plastic. I have square shaped pieces made of plastic. All the sides of these pieces are 5 cm each. You take these pieces and place them on these books in such a way that it covers the whole book so that the pieces remain within the boundary of the book. Madam I don't understand fully can you show how to perform one book so we can do the other one ourselves all right check this out this is your book now we place the square shaped plastic pieces on top of this book in such a way that there are no gaps between the pieces madam the book is completely covered with square shaped pieces but how do we know the measurement Of course 
we know now that we need 36 pieces to cover this book. Now measure the other book in the same way. Then you will know yourself which book is bigger. Ok, now we will measure the second book. We place these square shaped pieces on the other book in such a way that no piece is placed on top of each other. Now tell me Vandana, how many pieces did you need to cover this book? We use 35 pieces to cover this book. Now tell me, whose book required more pieces to cover? Madam, 35 pieces were used to cover my book. Whereas, 36 pieces were required to cover Neha's book. That means, Madam, more pieces were required to cover my book. So, does this mean that Neha's book is bigger than mine? Yes, because Neha's book will occupy as much space as 36 pieces. And your book will occupy as much space as 35 pieces. This means that Neha's book occupies more space than your book. That means Neha's book is bigger. Hmm, now I understand why we can say that Neha's book is bigger than my book. Like this, what are the objects we can measure? Whenever you asked to measure a shape, you can use this method, Neha and Vandana. Give us some examples, madam. Alright, Neha. See, you can measure the desks of your class. You can also measure the board in your class in the same way. Field measurements are also taken in this way. But madam, why do we need to measure like this? See, Vandana, every object has a different purpose and that purpose defines how the object will be measured. For example, when making your class desk, special attention is paid to all the things that will be placed on it. The more items that can be placed on it, the more useful it becomes. So, to measure your class desk, we will measure how much space it occupies. Similarly, the efficiency of a farm depends on how many plants can be planted in it. If the field is small, it occupies less space, then fewer plants can be planted on it. And if the field covers more space, then more plants can be planted on it. Therefore, to measure a field, we will measure how much space it occupies. Understood, madam. Madam, can you give us these pieces? We will measure a lot of object with this. Why not, Vandana? Keep this with you and measure different objects with it. Thank you, madam. Now we can measure many objects. Today you learned that to measure any shape, we find how much space it occupies. And to measure some items like fields, desks, etc., we measure the area they cover. Size of Simple Shapes Part 2 Today we will learn how to measure how much space a shape occupies if we do not have enough pieces to measure. Neha and Vandana, what would you like to learn today? No madam, we have not come to learn anything but to take something. Tell me, what do you want? Madam, actually, we need more of the plastic square shaped pieces you gave us to measure the shapes. Why? Because we are measuring our desk, but the pieces which you have given us are not enough. We are unable to cover the whole desk with them. You can measure the desk with them even without covering the entire desk. How? Let's go to your class. I will help you understand how we can measure your desk even if you don't have all the pieces.
see, madam, all the pieces have been used, but we could not measure the desk. With so many pieces, we can easily measure the size of the desk. See, I will explain. To measure this shape, I will place these pieces on it. Vandana, now you tell us how many pieces were required to cover this shape completely. Four. Let me remove one of these pieces. Now, Neha, you tell me, with the help of just three pieces, how can we know that four pieces will be required to cover this shape entirely? It is very easy. There is an empty space equal to one piece. So, by looking at it, we can tell that four pieces will cover this shape completely. You can certainly find out by looking, but in mathematics, there is a better way to find it. That I don't know, ma'am. No problem. I will tell you. Tell me, how many pieces are placed in the top row? Two pieces, madam. Now, Neha, you tell me, how many pieces are placed in the side row? Madam, the side row also has two pieces. You both are right. Now, we will multiply the number of pieces placed in the top row by the number of pieces placed in the side row. This will tell us how many pieces will be required to cover this shape. That means to know how many pieces will be required to cover this shape, we have to multiply 2 by 2. Am I right? Yes. Multiplying 2 by 2 will give us 4. That means 4 pieces are required to cover this shape. Yes. But madam, in this particular shape, we could just count and find out. Yes, in this particular shape, you could count and find out. But it is not so easy to count when there are very large shapes, such as your desk. In such situations, this method works better. Now we will try to measure the desk. Yes, go ahead. 18 pieces are placed on the top row of the desk and 6 on the side. So, we multiply them to identify how many pieces will be required to cover the entire desk. We get 108 on multiplying 6 by 18. So, does this mean that we will require 108 pieces to cover this desk completely? Yes. Wow, this method is very good. In this way, if we know the number of pieces used in the top row and the side row, we can find out the total pieces required. That is why I said, you don't need more pieces for this. Today we learned, by multiplying the pieces placed on the top row and the side row of any shape, you can find out how many pieces will be required to cover the shape completely. That is, to measure a shape, we don't need to cover the entire shape. We only require enough pieces to cover the top and side edges. Size of Simple Shapes Part 3 Today we will learn the correct way to measure shapes with the help of square shaped pieces. My cardboard is big. No, Rayansh, my cardboard is much bigger. Hey, what happened, Rayansh and Ayushman? What are you both arguing about? There is nothing to argue about. Ayushman has a small cardboard and I have a bigger one. No, Rayansh. How many times should I tell you that your method of measuring the cardboard is wrong? Show me. How have you both measured? Look, Neha. 36 pieces were required to cover my cardboard. Whereas, 35 pieces were required to cover Ayushman's cardboard. This means that my piece of cardboard is bigger. Hey, Rayansh. Ayushman is right. You have incorrectly measured the cardboard. Why? What's wrong with it? Look, you have placed few pieces on top of each other. That is a wrong way to measure. So, you can't place the pieces on top of each other? 
Yes, the pieces should not be overlapped and there should be no gaps between them, like Ayushman has placed. That's how you will get the correct measurement. Okay, so what should I do now? Now, remove all these cards and measure again. This time, don't place the pieces on top of each other. Okay. Yes, now the pieces are placed correctly. Now you can tell the correct measurement. 32 pieces were required to cover my cardboard. Whereas 35 pieces were required to cover Ayushman's cardboard. This means that my cardboard is small. Now my craft work will be smaller. Hey Jayansh, don't be disappointed. We will work on the craft together and make the biggest craft work in the whole class. But we don't have colored paper for such a big craft work. I have a very large colored paper. See this? It is very big indeed. How will we measure it? We don't have enough pieces. We don't even need a lot of pieces. We only require enough pieces to measure the two sides of this paper, Ayushman. I don't understand. I will explain. Just place these pieces on two sides of this paper. Till then, I will return these pieces which I took from Madam. Okay. Hey Ayushman, placing the pieces like this won't give you the exact measurement. They have to be placed on the top and side edges. What difference does that make? See, when you have to measure a shape with fewer pieces, then we multiply the number of pieces placed on two sides. Yes, there are pieces placed on two sides. Now we can multiply them. There are 10 pieces placed on the top edge and there are 10 pieces placed on the lower edge. When we multiply them, we get the answer 100. This answer is incorrect. To find out the correct answer, we have to place the pieces on the top and on the side. Ok, I will remove the pieces placed at the bottom and I will add pieces to the side. Yes, now this is correct. What difference does it make? It will make a difference. Now let's multiply the number of pieces placed on top by the number of pieces placed on the side. 10 pieces are placed on the top and 9 pieces are placed on the side. And multiplying these numbers will give us result 90. Look, it made a difference. First answer was coming to be 100 pieces. Now the answer coming 90 pieces. And this is the correct answer. So, a total of 90 pieces will be required to cover this paper. Oh, now I get it. This method is much better. With this, any shape can be measured with fewer pieces. Yes, that's what I was saying. Today we learned that to measure a shape when we place the pieces on it, they are placed in such a way that there are no gaps between them and we have to keep in mind that the pieces are not placed on top of each other. And to accurately measure a shape, it is important to cover the two sides of that shape, the top and the side edge. Size of Shapes Using Squared Sheets Part 1 Today we will learn how to measure difficult shapes. Madam, we are facing difficulty in measuring shapes. Why? You have already learned how to measure shapes using square shaped pieces. Why is it difficult now? Madam, the difficulty is that we are not able to measure many shapes. Which all shapes? For example, our pencil box. When we are trying to measure it with square shaped pieces, some of the pieces are left out of the shape. And if we remove them all, then the pencil box is not covered properly. Do you have any solution to this problem? Yes, 
if we have small shaped squares, then we can easily measure the pencil box. Absolutely correct. That is why we use this kind of paper to measure the shapes. There are so many square shaped boxes in this paper, right? Yes, and each box is of 1 cm length. You can measure your pencil box with the help of this. Then do we need to cut the pieces to measure the shapes? No, there is no need to cut. Then how do we measure? Give me the pencil box, I will tell you. See here, we will put the paper like this and we will put the pencil box on top of it. Now we will trace the pencil box. When we remove the pencil box, then the shape of it will appear on the paper. By looking at this, we can tell how many squares are covered by this shape. Now we will count the squares that are covered. Oh wow! This is a nice method. Yes. But how do we count them? Some squares are covered only in half. So what? We can count two half squares as one full square. Oh yes, I never thought about it. No problem, we will count now. This shape has covered five and half squares at the top. We will leave the half squares for now. Count the squares which are completely covered. Later, we will count the half squares and add them. Okay, then we will count only the completely covered squares. The number of squares covered at the top is 5. And the number of squares covered at the side is 12. That means the total number of squares covered completely is 5 multiplied by 12 that is 60. Now Neha, you count the squares that are covered in half. Ok madam, the squares that are covered in half are 12. Yes, how many full squares are formed with these half squares tell me? There will be a total of 6 full squares because we can count 2 half squares as 1 full square. Absolutely correct Vandana. Now tell me how many squares are covered by this pencil box? Madam, the total number of squares covered will be 60 plus 6 that is 66. Absolutely right Neha. In the same way, with the help of this paper, we can find the number of boxes covered by any difficult shape. Difficult shape? Yes, difficult shape. That means which is not a square or a rectangle. Like what? Like a paperweight. Can you tell me how many space this covers? Okay, first we will trace this on the paper. Now we will find out how many squares are covered by this. This is difficult to count. Because this shape has covered some squares in half, some more than half and some less than half. That is why all the shapes except a square and a rectangle are called difficult shapes. Now I understood what are difficult shapes. Measuring them is not easy. That is why they are called difficult shapes. But madam, how do we measure it then? There is a rule for this. The squares which are completely covered by the shape are counted as it is. The squares which are covered in half and which are covered more than half are also counted as full squares. And the squares which are covered less than half are not counted at all. By doing so, we don't get the correct measurement of the shape but an approximate value. What is meant by that? Approximate value means the measurement that is closer to the correct one. Suppose the measurement of an object is 70 squares, you will get 69 or 71 squares, which is a little more or a little less than 70. Oh, that means we can measure difficult shapes almost correctly. Yes, Vandana. Now tell me how many squares are covered by this paperweight. The number of squares covered completely in this is 14. The number of squares covered in half or more than half is 10. And the number of squares covered less than half is 10. We will count only those squares that are covered in half or more than half. That means we will add the number of squares that are covered in half or more than half to the number of squares that are covered completely. So the answer is 24. That means this paperweight is covering almost 24 squares. 
Yes, in the same way you can measure any difficult shape. Wow, now we can measure any difficult shape. Today we have learned how to measure difficult shapes. And while measuring difficult shapes, squares that are covered in half and more than half are counted. And the squares that are covered less than half are not counted. Size of shapes using squared sheets. Part 2 Today we will learn how to measure difficult shapes and how to compare shapes based on their measurement. Dad, why are you looking at this map for so long? Vandana, I want to build a small fish pond in our farm. So, I took the help of an engineer to make a map of our farm and the pond to be built in it. Look, this is the map of our farm and the pond is shown in this. I want our pond to be one-fourth of the size of the field. But by looking at the map, I am not able to find out whether the pond is one-fourth of our farm or not. Dad, I can help you out to find that. How? Madam has taught us to find the measure of difficult shapes and the shape of both the farm and the pond on the map are difficult. Okay, then measure it and find out whether the measure of this pond is one-fourth of the total measure of our farm or not. First, we will measure the whole farm. But how will you do that? Take a look. This farm is covering some squares completely. First, count them. One, two, three, four, one eighty-three, one eighty-four. The number of squares completely covered by the farm is equal to 184. Now we will count the squares that are covered in half or more than half. Their number is 24. Some of the squares are covered in less than half by the farm. We don't count them. That means the farm has covered almost 184 plus 24 squares. Therefore, this farm covered almost 208 squares. It looks like this. Now you want the pond to be built in one-fourth of the farm, right? That means the pond should cover 208 divided by 4 squares. That is, if this pond covers almost 52 squares, then we can say that this pond is one-fourth of the farm. Yes. You are absolutely right. Now we will count the squares covered by this pond. The number of squares that are covered completely is 34. Now we will count the squares that are covered in half or more than half. Their number is 18. The number of squares that are covered less than half are not counted. This shows that this pond has covered 34 plus 18 equal to 52 squares, which is one-fourth of the squares that are covered by the farm. That means that the engineer has measured it correctly. This pond covers exactly one-fourth of our farm. Oh, wow, Vandana, you have already become an engineer. No, Dad. There is still a lot to study for that. Today you have learned that difficult shapes can be measured based on the number of squares they are covering and while measuring the shapes, squares that are covered in half and more than half are counted. The squares that are covered less than half are not counted.